Oops. I don't know. Whoa. Guess what I did. Okay, guys. <laughs> I had the camera zoomed in on all that work I just did. Hi, friends. Thanks for stopping by. I've got an art project for you that's super fun. I'm going to take this painting I found online from Country Design Style, and I want to recreate it. For this project, I need one of these 8x10 canvas boards I bought from Walmart. I will be using apple barrel paints in brown, black, and white from Walmart. I will need a cleaning sponge for painting. I used popsicle sticks, a paint tray, a small tool for stirring, paper for blotting excess paint, various paint brushes, a jar with water, and this fantastically helpful tabletop easel I purchased from Amazon. I will need three basic shapes cut out from a sponge. I would like to demonstrate how you can use tools like sponges to create artwork. Using a sponge can make creating a painting not so difficult and not so scary for a beginner artist. The three shapes that I'm cutting will be used for the three main shapes of the windmill. I will be using paint brushes, but that will be for extra touches. We're going to begin with our little body of the windmill. Now I'm going to use a dark brown. I'm just going to put some of that brown in there. I'm going to put a little bit of black in here. And now I'm going to use my little little tool here to stir it up. See if I got what I wanted. Didn't look like it was going to turn into it, but if you just give it a little bit of time. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to dip it very gently into the paint all along. Make sure all of it is covered. I'm going to blot it on the paper that I have. I'm just going to blot it. I want to have all those little holes show up. I don't want it to be perfect. Let's go ahead and press into this just a little bit. And I'm not going to press every part of it. Oh, I like that. I like that. Maybe a little bit in this area right here. We get a little bit more. You know what? And now that I've created that area, I can go back and do a little bit of it more. Now, we're going to worry about the placement of the blades, and the reason I'm using the popsicle stick is because that is going to come in handy for creating the spokes. I need to create and find the center focal point for this, and because this is the body, then naturally the center of it should come inwards. I'm going to make this my mark for my center. I'm going to take my popsicle blade and I'm going to run it through the center of that to create my first spoke. And then I have to take in consideration each one of these blades is going to be about that big. You have to think about it. The spoke is not going to be centered with your blade. Your blade is going to go 
I'm going to have the blade go on the outside of it. That's how the blades and the spokes go. So the next blade over, there won't be the blade because it'll be on the other side. It will be to the right, the way I'm putting it, it will be to the right of the, of the spoke. So I can put my blade there, my spoke there, I'm sorry, my spoke. I misspoke. It was spoke. <laughs> Oops, a little bit off. Okay, so we've now we've created our spokes. So let's get those blades on. Put myself a hefty amount of black. And I'm gonna come in with my white. So now let's take this sponge and I'm going to put my first blade. And remember now, the blades are going to go to the right of the spoke. So there's the spoke and the blade is going to come out almost to there, to the body, or it could come to the body, whatever, however it lands, we'll just do that. We'll just deal with that. But most importantly, come out to the spoke and then just press gently. I don't know, I guess my paints are attracting these flies, but they're getting on the nerves. I think I'm going to put my tail about here. I don't know if you can see the beginnings of this windmill, but it's happening. So now at this point, we are going to be using brushes. I know some of you might think, wow, that's so scary. I don't want to use a brush, but trust me, it's not that bad. And for what we've got to do now at this point, it's not that big of a deal. So I need to create a much lighter gray. So I'm going to get some with my popsicle stick and just put it into one of these little things right here, two little scoops there. And now I'm going to add some white. I'm going to use this size. Okay, yes, it is dry down here. This is dry. So I'm going to create some lighter. We're going to create lighter to the right of this, and then we're going to leave the darker on the left. So let's add some. And you know what? I'm not going to brush it on. I am going to dab it on. And I'm seeing that I'm going to probably go even lighter. So, but let's, let's let this be here for now.
can just just blot it on just some of this paint here but we've, we've got a little actual thing we're gonna do with this tail so I'm just gonna blot on some of this I need a little bit to just go into this body I'm going to drag some of this one out to make room put it over here now I'm going to take the white and I'm going to add it again I'm going to use this little smaller one right here so now I'm going to give even more depth by creating it even lighter and look I'm not even going to do brush strokes I'm just tapping it on and we're going to concentrate this lighter gray only to the more inside part of the blade not so much down just more to the inside of it like so same thing here Okay guys, it started to sprinkle a little bit. I have moved to underneath the awning and let's hope that the weather holds and it doesn't get too crazy out here. Okay, now I think I've achieved what I was wanting here for this last bit of highlight. I am going to just do some really like at the very, right up here, through the most highlight. And guess what? I'm doing it very sparsely. I'm not coating it all the way through. And guess what? I'm, I'm going to maybe do this a little bit at the end here. Look at that. Look how that jumps out. That is just jumped out right here. Separated from this, the body that really separated it. You know, these blades are supposed to be galvanized metal. So if you think about it, all these grays, what you see in galvanized metal. Add a little bit more highlight really helps to give definition of what's going on here and you know you don't have to do all of these blades the same you don't want them all the same
So let's work on the tail. I'm going to take this second from the lightest and I'm going to create two actual divided halves. And I'm going to follow a pattern of it going straight down, but I'm leaving a center portion of it because that is going to be like the center stripe of it. And then it will split off like this. Oops, I don't know. Whoa, that's what I did. I had the camera zoomed in on all that work I just did. Okay guys, I got so carried away and so excited about doing this that I forgot to zoom back out. What you missed was my highlight to the majority of these fan blades up at the top. And I dabbed on a little bit of that lightest gray also onto the center pole. Here now in this section, I'm going to bring out some of that dark brown. If you notice, remember I didn't go all the way to the edge with all my other colors, so the darkest thing still exists there. I think I wanna do just a little bit more detail on my fan blades. Go ahead and do a ring around here, but I'm only going to do the left side. I'm not doing the right side. We're going to create the shading to happen on this side, like we did for the fan blades. I'm going to come in 
with some dark brown. We are acknowledging that this does have an actual base that this is on. I'm going to get the very lightest right here. Just dab a little bit on them on there and I'm gonna do this in the center here. I think I'm gonna come back with the next darker one, but I'm just gonna go in right now and do the center with this. certain spots just give a little even back here I'm going to use this second darker one bit of, you notice I'm just doing this, not this gray right here. And I'm just going to give another so that paint wasn't totally dry, so I'm going to have to get a little bit more to make it be pronounced. great. I'm going to create a streaky background. I'm going to take this really flat brush, but I need to create some paint for this. You know what? I want to bring a little bit of this brown. I'm going to bring it in here. Okay, now I'm going to take this and now I'm going to really blot it out. I want to have a real true dry brushing effect. So I'm just gonna kind of, and there's no nothing perfect about this guys, okay? I'm just doing this and then I'm gonna just streak it down like so. I'm just streaking it down. Notice I'm making the brush be this way and not flat. I'm going to make some single just strokes. Thanks again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this painting as much as I did. And if you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, be sure to click on that subscribe button and to be notified of all my upcoming videos, hit that notification bell. Subscribing to my channel helps me to grow in the YouTube community. For any questions about this project, please comment below. If you like the rustic or farmhouse theme, stay tuned for my next painting which will go perfectly with this windmill. Until the next video, have a great day.